a little bit of chair. This won't take. This won't take too long. Um, start out. I uh, I'll make a pattern, and I use uh, I use this book a lot, and I, I'll uh, copy one of the fish and I'll modify it a little bit so it makes a better better decoy. Um, and then I have a light table also, and then I'll trace and I'll make a the pattern will come out like this. And uh, what I'll do is I'll copy this onto uh, cardstock so it's a little more, more solid. And uh, after I get, it's just a, it's similar to cutting out ducks. You use the top view and the, and the side view. I did this one so I show everybody. And then it just maybe breaks apart. <laughs> Knife. Maybe, could be. I didn't bring a screw. Yeah, I left too much there. You just throw that away, and then you've got the, uh, the blank ready to go. First thing I do is uh, I'll draw a uh, line where the tail goes in. make that a little deeper even than the, what your tail is. I've got a, I just brought this along to show, I guess. Um, what I've got a, at home, I got a, uh, a Dremel with a uh, flexible shaft on it that I just keep this cutoff wheel on. You can get these at the Menards or uh, Home Depot. Uh, and I'll take and I'll just cut in there with that. And then I'll take this thin little saw and I'll finish it off and I brought a we'll take this one apart so I can show you everything so the tail goes in and I left a little long and then you'll, you'll just fill this all up with uh, two part epoxy and uh, insert it and then I clamp it and let it sit overnight or so and uh, pretty simple so you're carrying the grooves for all the fins in the piece of wood yeah the they'll be cut in I'll show you how to do that in just a second um, then after the tail is all set up, I'll drill holes. I got a drill press that I uh, drilled a couple holes and I'll use that same two-part epoxy and I'll put the toothpicks in. Maybe. Coated with epoxy and then go in. You want them to fit a little bit loose so that you get epoxy on them. And then I'll use that same cutoff wheel, but after that dries, and I'll cut them off with this, and I'll uh, then I'll start carving. And uh, I don't have to. We're working decoy. It doesn't have to be very fancy. I just put the put the gills in and, and uh, a little bit on the mouth. Um, for the eyes, I use uh, tacks. You can get uh, they have a lot of different sizes at uh, Hobby Lobby. And I go everywhere up to these the bigger decoy. I'll use uh, large ones. And on these on these muskies, I use a little quarter inch. And oops, the way I put them in, I'll, I'll, uh, well, I'll mark them off and I'll drill a tiny little hole. I have my little 
Dremel bits here. I use a uh, about a three sixty fourth is all you need. And you put a you put a guide hole in there, and then I'll use a Forster bit. And I'll just drill just a little bit so it doesn't crack the wood when you pound them in. So then you put them in and, and uh, just tap them in with the hammer, and uh, your eyes are good. Now to put the Tins are cut out with a uh, with a tin snips. This aluminum cuts real easy, so it uh, it doesn't take hardly any time at all. Uh, but then you have to uh, hammer them flat. I have a uh, piece of steel. It's it's about this about as thick as this, and a little bit bigger. And uh, you just you'll put it on there, and you'll just hammer it till it gets flat. And once you got that done, then I take it over to my, uh, I've got a Fordham high-speed grinder. And I'll use some, just some cheap diamond bits. And you can get into the, the grooves here where you miss a little bit with the tin snips. So you can kind of round that off. Um, and then when you get all that done, I will, uh, I'll take, I got a little wheel I use on my uh, Fordham. And these run, you can run these about 10,000 RPM, any faster, and they like to fly apart. <laughs> so you'll go around and you'll just, you'll smooth out everything, get that edge, and you go back and you'll run it along the, the side here just to deburr it. Because that, that uh, tin snips will give you a little bit of a ridge on there. So you get that all smooth, and then and I use a 220 sandpaper to sand everything smooth. Uh, if there's any oil or anything on there, It'll uh, take that off, so then the primer will stick real good to it. And to place those uh, pins here, the, the center ones here, you can just draw a center line and, and mark out how long it takes to, on, the, on the top here also. And the side ones, um, on working decoys, you keep kind of flat on the bottom. I have a pencil I've uh, round down halfway and it just uh, keeps everything on the same plane that way you just run the pencil along there and mark the mark the fins and then <coughs> after that um, I drilled up I drilled the holes for the uh, for the lead to go into you want to keep the uh, the front one, I'll usually take a uh, quarter inch bit and I'll go in like this and I'll get up as close to the nose as I can. You want to keep a lot of weight so they, so they, when they drop they swim forward. And then uh, the back one, you don't need quite as much there, but that's to keep the, uh, keep the, the back end from floating up. There's a lot of buoyancy in the wood here so it'll, it'll float up. You want it to, to hang level in the water. It'll, it'll hang at quite an angle when it's out of the water and then when you put it in that'll, that'll come up. So after you've uh, got those drilled and you'll put the... How deep do you go with those? Uh, you know I go about... I use a Forstner bit in my drill press but I'll go about uh, one and a half of the, of the, of the bit. Well, probably a little, right on the half an inch or a little more, a little less, I mean. Um, I usually finish them off with, uh, whoop. Oh, I don't know if I brought it. Oh, there it is. I've got a ball. It's a pretty rough one. I use that in my grinder, too. And I'll, <laughs> and I'll go in and I'll, I'll, uh, undercut it a little bit and I uh, want to try and keep the lead as low as possible so I'll just smooth it out in there after the Forstner bit and I'll work it toward the sides a little bit and then uh, and I'll put all the fins in well these these fins anyway I'll put it and then uh, 
then I'll pour the lid. And I usually try and pour a little more than I need and then if I need to take some out after I put it in the tank I can drill it out and uh, keep the hole inside the lead so it doesn't get into the wood. And Because uh, if you uh, swim them in the tank and you try and pour more lead in there it's hard to get all the water out. I use an air compressor to blow the water out but still lead and water don't mix very good. So it'll uh, turn to steam and splatter all over. Are those so, fins in the holes of the lid? Yeah, they'll go, they'll, uh, this one didn't, I put them a little higher on this one, but yeah, you want to kind of get them so they're, they're in the lead, it'll lock them in tighter. But, so then I, now I'll pour the lead, and I let that cool for a little bit, and, and, uh, and I'll get the other fins in here. And what I do then is uh, I take the ultra ultra liquid control. It's really thin super glue, and I'll put a bead on uh, each side of the uh, fins. It'll soak in, and it you can't pull them out with the pliers. They get real tight, and uh, I'll do that with all the fins. I'll cut some little patches of towel. You let it sit for a little bit so it gets in the groove and it sinks in real quick, so then you just wipe them off. Um, and then I fill them. I didn't bring my uh, two-part epoxy, the putty, uh, quick wood. I don't know if you guys use that. Anyway, that, uh, I'll take an old uh, X-Acto blade, and I'll fill in all the little gaps. You'll, you'll push it in there so everything is really tight. Something, you know, if you got a little gap or something, it, you can fill that up real easy. And it, yeah, you just make sure you get all around all sides of the fin. And then you can sand that off too when you're done. And uh, that's what, uh, we can look at this one later, but it shows the, shows the pins and then uh, all the filling in there. And they get, you want to keep water out of everything. That's the whole purpose of it. So now you get it all sanded up nice and smooth and then uh, you got the lead in it so it's ready to ready to test swim. I seal everything up with this Krylon matte finish about three coats. I'll take and uh, I'll, I'll spray right in the this one's got a on here. I'll spray right in there and if it gets a little overflow you just wave it off and make sure you get because it'll, it'll seep in around the lead and keep that from getting wet and splitting. So I'll give it about three coats of that let it hang up for a day or so however long you can wait you know <laughs> don't get anxious and then it's it's uh, it's in this shape ready to swim. The uh, eye screws I put in, uh, I just drill a small guide hole for them and uh, screw them in there and you put a little drop of super glue on there once you get everything make sure you got it in the right spot. Most of the time I come out real close to the leading edge of the fin, the front fin. And uh, and then I make, I make little hooks to hang it up for a few days to dry out and just uh, get ready to swim it. And it, you can see how they hang. And when that sits in the water, it'll sit nice and level. Northerns are a little tougher. They're a little longer and, and harder to get balanced just right. But uh, So uh, I guess what else am I forgetting? Oh, on, well on this Northern, I use a few little, I got some of Marv's uh, gouges here and I'll put that Put that little uh, groove in their head, you know, with a gouge. And otherwise, I don't. I carve the uh, carve the gills in a little bit around the mouth. You can use the uh, you can use. I use the pattern to draw them out so they get pretty symmetrical. And the fish will never know anyway. <laughs> so, but if you just if you just lay that on there, you can see it. You can trace the grill gills out and. Uh, So you get them pretty close to the same. And this is uh, this is how it looks before you put it in the tank and swim it. And then you'll either add weights in some places or you'll drill drill them out. And uh, I prefer to drill them out. But, uh, he's ready to go. This one I uh, 
put in the tank and I uh, you put it in the tank you want to swish it around make sure you get all the air bubbles out of the out of the air. Um, then after you get it swimming the way you want it you just fill it up with that quick wood again and after about an hour you can sand it nice and smooth and it, uh, it's very stable stuff it doesn't uh, swell up or anything so and then um, of course, after I sanded it, then I gave it a couple more shots of the, the Krylon. And the next step would be to, uh, to prime it. I've been using this for a long time. It's good, good primer. Paint sticks to it really well. And then you can, you can paint them any way you want. I mean, they don't have to be... I mean, this kind of looks like a sunfish. <laughs> and uh, this is a style of uh, Cadillac, Michigan. Except I put a, I put a metal tail on the Cadillac style, like uh, Oscar Peterson. They all had wooden tails, but wooden tails break. So <laughs> I make metal tails on almost all of my fish. And then you can you can adjust them too to get them to swim the way you want, or tighter or wider circle. And after they're painted, then I use uh, spar urethane, about three or four coats of that. And uh, that's real tough stuff. Uh, very durable and it it, it uh, doesn't get extremely hard. It'll flex a little bit. So when when you paint your fish, you use the air the air brush. Don't no, you? I do everything with. I carve I carve all my fish with a knife, yeah. and I uh, paint them all with a brush. Really? Yeah. I don't like airbrushes. <laughs> so and uh, yeah, it's just. Uh, yeah, you don't have to be fancy. You can just and, uh, red and white's a real popular color. Um, spots or whatever you want to put. I started I started doing some ducks so I can do spearing decoys that look like ducks so I can have both my hobbies there. So I've made a few of them lately and uh, they've been selling really well. <laughs> so. And there's some aluminum here and some patterns if you want some and uh, yeah it's uh, so when you use that black can at the end to yeah. spray it uh, yeah. our decoy, does that give it a shiny coat? Yeah, that's what makes it shiny. Because I use I use the uh, <coughs> traditions paint, same thing I use in my ducks. Only I put a lot of little uh, iridescence in with them or pearl or whatever to make them a little bit shinier. I'll use gold or silver in there too. It's gloss. They make satin too. Yeah. The uh, thing with spearing decoys though is high gloss sets. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the mat mat brush <coughs> will sit on your table for and this, years and years. This is tough stuff, stuff too. It's really really good. And then I used to have trouble. I used this uh, this two X uh, clear poly. But you had to let your decoy sit for about three weeks for the paint to cure really good. Otherwise it would wrinkle and that would just, you know, <laughs> you did all that work and all that painting and then the, then you'd have to sand it down and start all over again. It would make the acrylic paint wrinkle. Yeah, yeah. And I called the company too and I asked them, I says, well, why is it doing that? And he says, because your paint hasn't cured and it activates it again once you spray it up. But this stuff doesn't. I can paint it and two hours later I can oh. spray it. So my patience doesn't have to <laughs> be very long. <laughs> so traditionally, were the red and whites real popular because they were seen better in the water? You know, um, I'm not sure. It's, I think they had white house paint and red barn paint. So they kind of worked with, you know, the farmer. They, you know, they made them to feed their family is what they did, you know, because, yeah. A lot of the ones made back in the 30s, 20s and 30s, you know, they were, they speared to, to eat. So, I like to keep it, um, I like to taper it up this way. I like to leave the bottom kind of flat for working decoys. You make the fins big. Um, and I always try and do a, uh, give it a good silhouette. So I, I want to make the top darker than the bottom. So I kind of work my way up with the colors from light on the bottom to dark on the top. And the, uh, 
most of the time they're spearing in pretty clear water. But if the water, water's a little murkier, you want to you probably want a darker decoy. It'll show up the silhouette a little better. And uh, Kurt, do you yeah. prefer uh, pine versus cedar or anything special? I use I use almost all pine, white pine. It's you know it's got a little resin in it, so it doesn't soak up water. Uh, basswood will explode pretty much uh, if it gets a little break in the finish. You can you can fix the the finish on pine if it gets a scrape in it or it goes through. And you know, I'll put two or three coats of this, and I'll put a couple of coats of primer, and I'll put four coats, and then I'll paint it, and then I'll put four coats of this on top. So it's got a pretty thick skin, so it's pretty durable. But you can you can fix little dings, and I've fixed decoys too that. Maybe a fin has come loose, or uh, you know, they just the nose is all banged up from hitting the ice, and you can uh, you can touch them up pretty easy. So, and uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Do you cut your side fins, and do you use your Dremel that? Uh, yeah, I use that. I use this, and you can you make them a little long, and you can fill them in. Yeah. You can see where I where I filled these in, and. Uh, Oh, I was going to say on the on the sunfish, I use I've got an exacto knife here that's 30 years old that I carve all my fish with. <laughs> you know, and I even sharpen my exacto blade. I run them through the strop once in a while. But um, when you get one like this, it's hard to get in there. So I have a this knife will uh, you're able to get in here in the middle and carve it out. I got uh, this is called a sloyd knife. And uh, I think I got it from Flex Cut, and uh, it's really sharp. As you uh, you know, make your inventory of uh, decoys, have you noticed a, a pattern, or do you somewhat know what your fish weighs, and therefore you know how much lead to put in? You know, uh, I probably made 400 fish decoys. I still guess. <laughs> you know, I'll, I, I kind of know because you can see these are similar but um, and you can see the drill holes and sometimes I'll have to add a little bit more and uh, but yeah it, it's kind of you kind of get the hang of it after a while and some some of them I make one trip to the tank and they swim really nice and other ones I'll make a dozen trips to the tank it's just it depends on the wood and, and the length and thickness and a whole bunch of things and, and your, yeah. even your fins size of your fins I got a little anal with making some here the other year, and uh, for the lead, I was using uh, some number seven shot from some uh, reload supplies I had left over, and uh, I would weigh my decoy on a kitchen scale. Okay. Whatever the, you know, it weighed, uh, you know, one and a half ounces there for. Sure. After I made about, I think on that one batch, I made about 10, 15 of them. Pretty soon I started getting a pattern. Yeah. But You'll learn. like you say, when you went to the tank, so Some, <laughs> every once in a while, you get you, you get have to start over, drill that hole out, drill it out again. Yeah, if you get too much weight in the back, yep. you put them in the tank, and they'll hang like this, and then they'll swim backwards. And like you're like you're holding there. I mean, I don't know yeah. if anybody carries deep, the screaming decoys, but it is so damn deceiving. From where your uh, your line tie is on the top yep. of the head. Yeah. Oh, that makes a difference tail, too. That longer piece of wood. It's, it's yeah. Son of a gun, that flies up so fast on you. It's amazing how much weight you got to put in there. Yeah, because there's, there's a lot of buoyancy there. The same, but it's just that fulcrum point, where do yep. you put that weight? Yeah. I, you can see I usually get it right by the leading edge of that front fin, and that's been working real good for me. Sometimes i got to move it a little bit. And I've been making these ducks, and that's a whole different bird there, because they, they swim really nice because the wings are big, you know, the aluminum is. But... Uh, to get the balance point just right uh, is a little tricky, and they actually take a they take quite a bit of weight to uh, get them to go. You got to put some up in the head to get them to swim forward. And, but uh, yeah, there's I got lots of books if you want to look at them. And, uh, if anyone needs lead, Dale has got some lead for sale tonight. Lou <laughs> <laughs> asked about lead a while ago, and I. It's, a, it's hard to hard to find good lead nowadays. They don't they don't make wheel weights out of lead anymore. 
And uh, but I got some garage I go to once in a while. He's got five gallon bucket full of old Old ones. You can't even buy them at uh, scrap yards anymore. You can't buy lead at scrap yards. Mm -hmm. You can get on the internet though. They'll ship it to you. I bought 10 pounds. They put it in those uh, uh, priority mailboxes where they can stuff as much weight in there as they can, you know? (laughs) And so, yeah. Aren't you, aren't you glad you're not the UPS guy or the mail guy? Yeah. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you know union plumbers. Uh, yeah. Union yep. Members. I get some from a plumber too every once in a while. Yeah, the little five pound disc they got from the plumbers. Yeah. yeah. They're kind of handy. They're uh, they're still taking lead pipe out of uh, yeah. out of houses too, so they get some of that once in a while. And that's that's good lead. That's good soft lead. Good tasty lead. Yeah. <laughs> Just gotta make sure you melt it the first time outside. Yeah, that's what I do too. I put it in a tin can and a propane torch. And I burn, well with wheel weights too, I burn off all that oil and stuff and break mm-hmm. dust that was on it. And then you, uh, I made a little wooden, like make ingots out of the lead. <laughs> so I made them like hockey pucks. And then you can put them in your, in your mm-hmm. pots and, and they don't, uh, and a lot of the wheel weights too had, uh, I think they had tin in them. And uh, so that was always a problem to try and Are separate you it out. Are you dressed in a Tyvek suit with a respirator on? I wear a mask all the time and gloves. <laughs> but I do, it, I do it in my garage in the winter, otherwise I do it outside. But yeah, if you don't wanna, you don't wanna mess with that lead, that's not uh, good for you. It'll get you, you know. Yeah. I, have, uh, I don't know if anybody knows me here, but you know. Did a lot of medical work through the years, and done a lot of MRI rooms and uh, X-ray rooms and stuff. And we put a lot of lead sheet rock up. And the precautions that we have to go through with the work with lead is unbelievable. Yeah. Because, you yeah. know that uh, we don't even let the guys roam until they've had their uh, you know a couple hours of training how to handle it. You yeah. Suited up, dusted up, respirators, exhaust machines, taking up air machines and run. It's just unbelievable what you're supposed to do. I have a little fan I keep blowing too all the time. Yeah. Uh, then I. You know, I seal everything up so good, so nobody's going to be touching any lead. I mean, I do the same you know? thing when I yeah. go home. I wear nothing. I just go after it. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you don't lick but, your fingers in the process. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'd say it's a fun hobby. These spearing guys are, uh, yeah, they're a good bunch. If you got any more questions, or you want to come up and grab some patterns. And Mustangs. Yeah. Do you still have the Mustang? I do not. That was for a contest. No. Um, I know I've seen them someplace. I have got a model in my backyard. <laughs> the museum, Fagan Fighters Museum in Granite Falls. Oh, you can see right at the they're, airport? They're open again, yeah. Oh, He's okay. got a couple P-51s. A couple P-40s. You just got a Roman uh, Hellcat, oh. a Wildcat. Charles taking pictures and putting them on his site. Yeah, I got an advertisement. I run across the street from the guy that had it. Yeah, I see that. Who 